Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Evangelist Nick Garrett channel, Truth First Christianity in a Post-Christian Country, separating the objective and truthful from the subjective and traditional for the benefit of our faith walk. Today, we're talking really briefly about magic and miracles in the Bible. The word miracle is often used to describe something happening that brings both amazement and often delight to those who witness it. But people use the word for many different types of events. Dreams coming true. I mean, sometimes the good things that happen in life seem so out of reach when they happen, when a person gets a chance they deserve, or uh, when they win a prize, they may say it's a dream come true. In fact, someone had to be the winner, right? Uh, Stunning science is another great example. Think of Someone from a remote tribe seeing a television for the first time. They might call it a miracle. Other people know it works in a straightforward scientific way, even if they can't explain it in every detail. Now, what about things happening beyond the ordinary? Other miracles are events that seem to go against what people know of the way the world works. We might compare it in modern terminology as supernaturalism versus naturalism. Miracles occur and we want to seek a naturalistic definition for it. And those that remain unable to be defined by naturalistic terms often fall into the supernatural category. Now, what about miracles in the Bible? Bible writers hardly ever use the word miracle. They just report events as they believe them to have happened. Uh, and accept that there are many things about the world no one can understand or explain. If this is God's world, they reasoned, then God is in charge of what happens. It was that simple for them. However surprising it might seem to us. These surprising things fell into three main groups. Natural miracles. We might call that secondary causation. God's work inside his natural creation. In quite a number of Bible stories, unexpected happenings in the world of nature changed people's lives. As Moses led the Israelite slaves from Egypt, they reached a shallow sea where the reeds grew quickly. Uh, They crossed over when a strong wind blew the water to the other side. Later on their adventure, a landslide blocked the River Jordan and allowed them to cross. Any of these events could have happened naturally, but it is certainly a miracle that they happened when they did. People saw God at work in those events. And what about healings? The Bible tells many stories of people that were healed. A Syrian army officer, Naaman, bathed in the waters of the river Jordan on the instruction of the prophet Elisha. And a terrible skin condition disappeared. Jesus anointed a blind man's eyes with mud and he saw again. One of the first Christians, Paul, let cloths he had used be taken and used in healing others. There's also reference made to demons in the context of miracles. In ancient times, people often thought natural diseases were the result of people doing wrong or being possessed by demons. Somehow evil had gotten into them. The Bible teaches that sadness and suffering are part of the fallen condition of mankind, the state of the world. Not that an illness is caused by the wrongs an individual person might have done. Casting out demons was one way of saying that this is God's world, and God's will for his people in every respect is to be whole. Jesus made many people whole in this way enabling them to live life to the fullest. This might be a very naturalistic definition for the way we see miracles played out in the Bible. But I want to talk for a second about supernaturalism. Often, we are skeptical of supernatural miracles because in our modern society, in our culture, in our epistemology, in our etymology, we seek to define things in naturalistic terms. Therefore, when something does happen that's in the supernatural realm, we don't have a framework to think about it inside of. So instead of accepting something supernatural that we can't explain must have happened, we will often 
posit a theory about something natural that could have happened. Do you see that there? And in one way, it takes the faith away because we have a supernatural God, a living God, a God that is timeless, a God that can work outside of his creation and use things inside of his creation for his glory. So there can be no doubt that there's supernatural that occurs. I want to point out something to you that's a very easy verse to pass over and even harder to really sit back and go, what does this mean? What's happening here? Gospel of John, Garden of Gethsemane, Judas comes up, kisses Jesus. This was the sign of the betrayal. Judas had been given 30 pieces of silver to betray his boy Jesus to turn him over to the Romans. Judas showed up with legions of Roman soldiers. Jesus says, who is it that you seek? And they say, Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. And the Bible indicates that at that time, they all were thrown back and fell down. And then the story goes on as the passion story that we recognize. But this verse is fascinating. What can it mean? What does it mean? And why is it there? The Bible is full of miraculous, supernatural events that even if you're somebody who doesn't take every word of Scripture literally, can't be denied. Anyway, what miracles in the Bible most intrigue you? What are your favorites? Tell me in the comments section and let's keep this conversation going. Please like, subscribe, make sure your notification bell is shaded in, share, hashtag TruthFirstChristianity on Twitter. If you want to support me, you can buy one of the books from the Tr Just Tell Me the Truth About Christianity series. We've got the future of Christianity. We've got the Holy Land Crusades. We've got the early church councils. Reformation and Counter-Reformation is going through the final edits. And you can also buy my nonfiction history shipwrecked in the land of King Tobacco, the first Washington family immigrant to America. Thank you for your time, friends. And as always, may your work today bear fruit.
pushing me away. You're leaving me.